Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're back with my favorite tech gadget of 2018 so far, the Analog Super NT. This is a way to play your Super Nintendo and Super Famicom games on your high-def television in a very, very accurate way. And I have a full review of this link down below in the video description so you can learn more about it. I also did a follow-up video where we looked at some new firmware that added some functionality to the console. And it's been uh, really a ton of fun to play with. And I've had some friends over already, and we've really been uh, just so pleased with how this thing came out. Now, the one thing that I uh, did not cover in the first review was was the Super Game Boy. Uh, this was a device that allowed you to uh, play your Game Boy games on your television using a Super Nintendo. And I managed to find one this weekend. I was in New York City for Toy Fair, and my friend that was along with me suggested we go and check out some retro game stores in New York. And I found this one uh, at a store called Video Games New York for about 30 bucks, which isn't, I don't think, a bad price here for a uh, complete inbox Super Game Boy. And I think this device here is new old stock, meaning that it's never been opened before. Uh, so we're going to be opening and unboxing this device and then trying it out with our uh, Super NT here with a couple of games that I have on the desk here, including a flash cartridge. So we'll see uh, how well the Super Game Boy works with this uh, newfangled device here. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the Super NT here with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed what you're about to see before I uploaded it. I also purchased the Super Game Boy here for 30 bucks with my own funds as well. So let's get into the unboxing, and then we'll see how this thing works. Okay, so let's break the seal here after 24 years. When this thing was packaged up, I was still uh, in college. I was a freshman in college in 1994, playing the Super Nintendo in my uh, dorm room with my roommate. He had a, a Super Nintendo that he brought with him. So let's take a look at this thing. Maybe this thing was open before, I'm not sure, but uh, either way, it's new to me. Uh, and here we go. Here's the Super Game Boy. Yes, yeah, so it looks like this has probably been played with before. It's got some uh, dirt and some scuff marks on there, but it looks like we've got the unit itself along with uh, some instructions here in Japanese. But thankfully, we live in the future and I can find out how this thing works when I get everything plugged in here. So uh, there you go. I'm going to probably uh, try one of my old games first here. I've got Solar Striker that I used to like playing on my Game Boy back in the day. So I'm going to pop this in here and pop it into our Super NT here. It fits just fine. And uh, now I'm going to power it up and see what happens when we do that. And I suppose to get it going, I probably should plug it in. So let me go do that and we'll take a look and see how this thing works. All right, so now that I've got everything plugged in, let's power this thing up and see what happens here. I still uh, have the Super NT running with its little intro screen here. I'll probably uh, change that soon, but I will let that run through here. Now this is, for all intents and purposes, a cartridge. So when we get the main menu up here, I'm going to go ahead and run the cartridge. Now there is a Game Boy inside of this cartridge basically because the Game Boy had a very different processor than uh, the rest of the Super Nintendo did. So they really just give you a Game Boy inside of this cartridge that executes the game. So we've got Solar Striker now loaded up and I'll hit the start button here. Now you'll notice we're not hearing any music in the game here and the reason is is that uh, by default on the Super NT they have disabled uh, the cartridge audio. I guess there's some noise that comes across when you don't have a game that utilizes this. So I'm going to pause this real quick here, and I'm going to hit select and down on the uh, Super NT, and I'll just pop up the uh, other screen here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go over here to settings, and I'm going to go to audio, and I'm going to turn on cartridge audio enable, and this will pass that audio through. So let me back out of the menu here. Uh, and then I'm going to hit start, and we should start hearing the Game Boy game now playing through the cartridge. And uh, as you can see here, we are getting uh, this really cool effect here. Pretty cool stuff. Now I'm going to pause the game again because there are some features in this thing that I think are kind of neat. So if you hold down the left and right shoulder buttons here uh, on the controller, you get some options. And the first option here is, uh, let's hit the right button here. Uh, this is a way to choose the different palettes that the game is using to fill in color. So as you know, the Game Boy was a black and white cartridge. Uh, this gives you some different options that you can pursue to uh, make it look the way you want. So if you want something that's closer to the original green screen on the Game Boy, you can do that, or you can uh, flip over to that. And they have a couple of different variations here that you can choose from as well. 
Over here is what you can do to change your border. So right now I've got a little Game Boy thing on screen. I can turn off the border completely here with this option and they have a few other ones you can choose as well. Uh, there are some games that have their own custom borders that uh, will come through on the cartridge. So some of the uh, Game Boy games that came out, you know, around the time that this thing came out had those custom borders that made use of the uh, Super Nintendo's hardware and everything. So uh, those are some of the borders you can choose. Well, let's just put it back over to the uh, retro version here just to be consistent. So uh, we'll select that. We'll go back over here. Uh, this button here just customizes the controls. So right now, uh, B and B are essentially, because remember the Game Boy only had two buttons on it. Uh, so the B button is mapped to these two here, and then the A button uh, is what you see there. So basically your B and A are lining up with the controller, but they have another version here where uh, you can flip that around. But I'm pretty happy the way it is, so I'll uh, back out of here. This one's kind of cool. I was playing around with this, not sure exactly what it did until I started getting a little deeper into it. Uh, you can customize the palette here. So we've got this uh, ship here that is red at the moment. Uh, I can make it darker red or make it black or make it less red here as I go. So you can uh, basically pick your color and then drop it in there. Uh, so I can just take that yellow there, drop it in like so, and I can uh, kind of play with different variations of the yellow here. And as you do this, uh, you get a password up here that you can use to uh, enter in to uh, come back to that at a later time. So they have some way to uh, get that thing memorized without storing anything on the Super Game Boy itself. And this last option here is kind of cool because you can go in and uh, paint your own background here. So I can take out uh, maybe some blue and just pick up the little pencil here. I can just draw a, a line here around my uh, little Game Boy window and make my own custom thing there. So kind of a cool thing here. You get all these different little options with this. And uh, so far it looks like the uh, Game Boy experience has been pretty accurate on this. And it should be because we are of course, running with real Game Boy hardware here. So I can go back to the game and keep shooting up the spaceships here and have a blast with my old Game Boy games. Now, a bunch of you were curious as to whether or not this worked with a flash cartridge. And it just so happens I have a flash cartridge. This is the uh, EverDrive GB that I reviewed recently. Uh, this is now the old version. There is a new one that just came out, but I think if the old one works, the new one should work too. So let's go ahead and run this cartridge here and see what happens. So we got our Super Game Boy logo popping up there and... All right, so we've got the main menu here, it looks like, popping up just fine. I'm gonna go over to Castlevania Adventure first and see how this one works. So I'll say load and start. And what this does is it uh, loads that cartridge into the cartridge memory here to then execute on the Super Game Boy. And it looks as though uh, this is working. So let's start the game and let's see what it sounds like as we're playing and see what it looks like too. It's funny, when this game came out, I was so excited to have Castlevania in a port portable form. I'm getting some glitches on screen, and it might just be that I've got a bad ROM here, so we'll see if the other games that I have on here will uh, do the same thing here. There are some glitches that I'm seeing, and it could just be how I have it connected to my video system, but uh, I'm definitely seeing some glitches here. So, all right, cool stuff. So let's reset it here, and uh, let's go back to the main menu and see if we can get something else to work on this. Here's another one of my favorite games from back in the day. This is Motocross Maniacs, and this is a lot of fun. Uh, now you'll notice here that the music might sound a little fast, and that is because the Super Game Boy runs the Game Boy games a little faster than how they run natively on a real Game Boy. Uh, there was an oscillator chip that was not uh, present in this version of the Super Game Boy, both this Japanese one and the uh, US one. Uh, they did come out with another Super Game Boy in Japan called the Super Game Boy 2 that uh, added that chip. So that one is probably going to be a more accurate experience than uh, what we're currently playing on this one. But still, it's pretty cool to get your uh, old Game Boy games running here uh, pretty nicely with all the custom borders and colors and that sort of thing. Well, let's take a look now at a game that uh, takes advantage of some of the Super Nintendo uh, enhancements that can come when they are plugged into the Super Game Boy. We're going to check out Space Invaders now. All right, so let's take a look now at Space Invaders, and there's going to be a portion of this that's not going to work the way I was hoping, and I'll explain in a second here, but this is a Super Game Boy enhanced game, so you can see that we've got a custom border up here, and we have 
uh, two different play modes. I'm going to start with the Super Game Boy mode here. And uh, what this will do is load up a, a version of the game that was enhanced for the Super Game Boy, meaning that we've got full color here that um, we would not normally have on the regular Game Boy because back then, of course, it was a black and white console. So I don't have to do any special uh, modes here. We've got uh, the Space Invaders game here running in color. Now, one of the cool things about this game, and unfortunately this is probably not going to work, uh, is that they did have an actual Super Nintendo game on that ROM. So when you switched it into that uh, Super Nintendo mode, uh, you could get the 16-bit version of Space Invaders. But unfortunately, it looks like this is the one Game Boy game that is region locked. And uh, the region here is uh, getting read from the Super Game Boy. So when I go over to this uh, Super NES mode here, you'll see it telling me in a second here that uh, we are not authorized to play it on the Super Famicom because it thinks it's in a Japanese console because we've got the Japanese Super Game Boy. So, uh, you know, wah, wah, I can't get this working, which is kind of a bummer because I was really looking forward to uh, really trying the one game that had that feature to it, but uh, we don't have that option available to us. Now, about 20 years ago, Nintendo came up with the Game Boy Color, which is what I've got in my hand right here. And this was a more powerful Game Boy that also had full color games that were available for it. And of course, it would do some of the palette swaps that the Super Game Boy was doing for the older black and white cartridges. But I wanted to see what happens when we put a Game Boy Color specific game into the Super Game Boy. So let's run that cartridge here and see what happens with it. Uh, the Super Game Boy, of course, came out about four years before the Game Boy Color did. Uh, so if you do try to run your Game Boy Color games on here, you're going to get that warning. Now you might be curious as to what the input lag is on this thing. So I hooked the console up to my Samsung 4K TV over there. I shoot the television screen at 240 frames per second with my iPhone and then measure how many frames it takes for a button push to register on screen. I've been using that method with all of the consoles that I've tested over the last couple of months. And we use that same TV in game mode uh, to get the best consumer kind of experience here out of a TV that a lot of people might have. And we came in at 80 milliseconds, which is almost double uh, what the Super NT is natively uh, just running a Super NES game. So there's certainly a lot of stuff going on with that uh, Super Game Boy cartridge that is probably impacting the input lag. Uh, you've got the controller input coming in through the Super Nintendo side, yet the cartridge is actually executing the code. So I can see how that might get a little fouled up. Now I wanted to bring out my other analog console that came out last year. This is the NT Mini that uh, ran the original Nintendo and Famicom games. And this works very similar to how the Super NT does in that they use a field programmable gate array processor to simulate the original hardware. And one of the things that happened here is they released a jailbreak firmware that added a whole bunch of other systems from the 80s, including the Atari 2600 and the ColecoVision and the Sega Master System, but also uh, the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. And uh, this I found to be a great way to play your original Game Boy games here, as you can see. Uh, this is right now running the Game Boy Core, so it's kind of simulating how the screen looks. There, there's some configuration to uh, how things appear on screen here as well. And if I wanted to, I could load up the Game Boy Color version, uh, play this black and white game with those palettes swapped out, or uh, play some of the original Game Boy Color games as well. So lots of cool stuff that you can do here with the, the original uh, Analog NT Mini uh, that I hope they can do with the Super NT at some point, because there's no reason why this console can't do what this one does. It's just a matter of uh, some firmware being issued for that to happen. So that is probably going to be uh, the better way to play your Game Boy games on your television if you did pick up one of these things is hope that whoever has been writing the jailbreak firmware for this thing will uh, start rolling out some additional cores to support some other systems because I really have enjoyed going back in time here and playing all of these different consoles that I grew up with as a kid very accurately. The consoles look great. They all play as well as the uh, hardware it was designed to initially replicate and it's just been so fun to have friends come over who I used to play these games with as a kid and I had them up on my big 60 inch TV and everything. So this has been uh, really fun and I'm hoping that we see some of these cores make their way over to the Super NT so 
uh, more people can enjoy that. So the big question is, though, uh, do you get the Super Game Boy if you don't already have one? Uh, my advice would be probably not. It is a little glitchy, as you saw, and that's not the fault of the Super NT. It's really just uh, how this hardware was designed to work with the uh, original Super Nintendo. I think if you can get the uh, Super Game Boy 2 for the fa Super Famicom, uh, that would be the one I would suggest. The only thing that won't work on there was that Space Invaders game, but that game was released separately as a Super Nintendo game anyhow in Japan, so you should be able to find that, uh, and that would be the one I would recommend going with, because this one's felt a little glitchy, again, because it lacks that oscillator to keep the uh, accuracy in check there, and it does run a little faster. But hopefully, uh, we'll get some more cores like we've got for the original console here that I think will uh, be really the best way to play some of those old Game Boy games. So let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. I'll keep coming back to this as more stuff becomes available for me to talk about, and stay tuned. We'll have a lot more to come on it. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast. Chris Allegretta, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.